The first step for any problem with trigonometry is you're going to label the sides in terms of the reference angle. And the reference angle is the given acute measurement in the problem. So in this case, the reference angle is the 37th. Now you're go next going to always label the sides in this order. So the first side that you're going to label is your hypotenuse, which is the side that is across from the 90 degree angle. So if I look across from the 90 degree angle, I get this side x, which I'm going to label as the hypotenuse. The next side is the opposite side which is the side directly across from the reference angle. So if I start at the reference angle of 37 and go straight across is the 13. So I'm going to call this side the opposite. The last side is the adjacent side, which is the side directly next to or touching your reference angle other than the hypotenuse. And if you label the sides in this order, it's always going to be your side that you have left. So this would be your adjacent side. Now the next step is to erase the label from the side that is not given a value or a variable. So in this case, we have that the hypotenuse has an x, the opposite has a 13, and however, the adjacent has nothing here. So we are going to erase the word adjacent or scribble it out on yours. So you're only left with two labels. Now for the next part, we're gonna set up trigonometric ratios. But first we need to discuss what those trigonometric ratios are. The first trigonometric ratio we have is called sine, and it's pronounced like the word sine, like a stop sign. And it's abbreviated as sin of x. However, you need to make sure you are pronouncing it correctly like sine. The next one is cosine, which is pronounced like the word cosine, like co-worker, or co with the stop sign. And it's pronounced cos with the x, so it looks like cos. However, again, you need to make sure you pronounce it as cosine. And our last one is tangent, so it's, which is pronounced as tangent, and it's abbreviated as just the letter tan. Now, in order to determine which trigonometric ratio to use, you're going to determine based on what's given to you. So, you're going to be given two side lengths, and it'll tell you which relationship to use. So, if you're given the opposite and the hypotenuse, you're going to use sine of x. If you are given the adjacent and the hypotenuse, you're going to use cosine of x. And if you're given the opposite and the adjacent, you're going to use tangent of x. So for step three, we're going to determine which trigonometric ratio to use based on the two sides and filling in the given reference angle. So since we have the opposite and the hypotenuse, we're going to use the first relationship, which says you're given opposite and hypotenuse, so we're going to use sine of x. So we're going to write sine, which we write as sin of the angle. Now, instead of writing x, we're going to fill in the 37. So we're going to write sine of 37. And that's your answer so far for this part. Now, for this setting up the trigonometric ratios, we have to know the relationships. The first one 
gives us that sine of x equals, and they're all fractions since they're ratios. So it would be the opposite over the hypotenuse cosine of x is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and tangent of x is the opposite over the adjacent. Now to help you remember the relationships, there's a few mnemonic devices that they use. With the mnemonic devices, they let H stand for the hypotenuse, O stands for the opposite, and A stands for the adjacent. And they also use that S stands for sine, C stands for cosine, and T stands for tangent. Now the mnemonic devices are either written as SOKOTOA, written in this way, or it's written with the fractions. But using this, we can tell that the first part here, S is O over H, tells us that if we fill it in, the S stands for a sign. So we have that sine of x equals the O over the H. So it's opposite over the H, which is the hypotenuse. The next one says is CH or C over is A over H. So with that one, you have that cosine of X equals the A is the adjacent. So the adjacent goes on the top and the H or the hypotenuse goes on the bottom. And our last one for tangent tells us that if we it would be tangent of x equals it's the opposite on the top so it's opposite over the a or the adjacent on the bottom so for our problem, we have that this was what where we were. Now if I use the relationship, so Katoa, so it's sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent using my relationship because I have a I'm using sine I'm going to use this relationship which tells me that it should be the opposite over the hypotenuse so in this case if I were to fill it in I'm going to have that it would be sine of 37 equals the opposite 
is 13. I'm going to put a 13 on the top over the hypotenuse, which in this case is x. I'm going to put x on the bottom. Now, in order to finish solving, we have to follow the following steps. So the first thing you want to do is clear the fraction. Clear the fraction. So we multiply both sides by x. So that these x's cancel becomes x times sine of 37 equals 13. Now, in order to finish solving, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we would divide both sides by sine of 37. So it becomes x equals 13 divided by sine of 37. And once we type that in our calculator, we would get that our final answer of 13 divided by sine of 37 is 21.601, which we're going to round to three decimal places. So we'll have x equals 21.601 as your final answer. Now, if we had an example such as this where x is in the numerator, the first thing we're going to do to solve is we're still going to clear the fraction. So I multiply both sides by 15. So this cancels, so it becomes 15 times sine of 32 equals x. Now we would have to plug this into the calculator. And that would give us our final answer of 7.949 equals x.